As a young boy, Leslie Irvin was the type of kid in school that got upset when punished by the teacher. So, how did someone who was deemed a nice person and left good impressions on people become a serial killer? In high school, he set five fires. Um, he had a history of burglary as well. He was never diagnosed with any mental disorder, but we guessed that he was seeking excitement. Irvin's killing spree began in 1954. The most common motive was robbery. 33-year-old Mary Holland was his first victim. She was found in the restroom of her liquor store, with her hands tied behind her back, with a single gunshot to the head. The second victim was 29-year-old Wesley Kerr. Kerr worked alone at a gas station during the night. He was found dead the next morning with his hands tied behind his back and a single gunshot to the head. The cash register was also empty. This was a common theme with Irvin. Hands tied behind the back and a single shot to the head. Each shot was believed to have come from a .38 revolver. Unfortunately, his killing spree did not stop there. Three months after the murder of Wesley Kerr, Irvin struck once again. 47-year-old Wilhelmina Saylor was shot to death in her Posey Country farm home. Like the others, her hands were bound behind her back and she had a single shot wound to the head. Her seven-year-old son found her body. A week after Wilhelmina Saylor was killed, some young guys in Vanderburg County saw a suspicious car at their home. They jotted down his license plate and called it in. That same week, Leslie Irvin struck once again and shot the Duncan family at their farm in Henderson County. Gobel Duncan and two of his family members died from a single shot to the head. Duncan's wife, however, did survive. Witnesses at the Henderson County murder saw a car similar to the one called in at Vanderburg County. So we looked up the license plate. The license plate was registered to Leslie Irvin. We identified arrested Leslie Irvin at the Psycho plant in Yankee Town where he worked. When we brought him in for questioning, he confessed. Soon after, Irvin's confession was released to the press. It became impossible to find a jury for this case. When the press printed the confession, it was over. Everyone read it, and everyone had an opinion about it. Irvin didn't so much as bat an eye at the trial. He showed absolutely no emotion. During recess, he would hang out with the reporters and talk about sports. He just didn't care. On January 6, 1956, Leslie Irvin was sentenced to death for the murders of Mary Holland and Wilhelmia Saylor. Irvin had no reaction to the sentence. He didn't sigh. He didn't cry. He didn't even move. Surprisingly, Irvin took the news well. However, his mother did not. Ultimately, she collapsed into sobs and tears, during which a reporter snapped a picture of her. When the reporter took the picture of his mother, Irvin lost it. He charged the reporter. Luckily, police grabbed him in time. After given his sentence, Irvin's attorneys argued that he was not given a fair chance at a trial because the publicity of the case made it possible to have an unbiased jury. Due to the fact that he was not given a fair chance at a trial, the case was heard by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court actually agreed with our argument and gave Irvin a new trial. The trial ended with the original guilty finding, but the sentence was changed from a death sentence to life in prison without parole. 
So, Leslie Irvin spent the rest of his life in prison with no chance of parole. During his time in prison, he was sent to the hospital where he was diagnosed with cancer of the lungs in 1982. Leslie Irvin died of cancer in the Indiana State Prison at the age of 59.